So a lot of kind of. Hey guys, it's uh, Coach Carroll back here, your favorite teacher again. And hey, big news today. Guess what today is? You, you probably probably don't know. It is only 16 days until college football. <laughs> Boom. If you're not excited about that, I'm sorry for you. All right. This is a 2D vector addition problem here. It's a application problem to hopefully encourage your critical thinking. It's not just what I call a plug and chug problem where you uh, follow some formula, turn the crank and get it. But um, most problems in life aren't like that. So I hope to encourage you to critically think about problems with these application type problems. So in case you're ever needing to uh, hold up a transmission tower or any type of tower with cables this will come in handy one day. Now um, also another note on these videos if uh, this video is not supposed to replace you working with friends and you working with a group I think it's uh, very very important that you learn how to uh, share ideas with other people, that you learn how to work well with other people. Even if you're very smart, uh, you know what you're doing, but you can't work with other people smoothly, you're not going to be a good engineer. So you're not going to work in isolation the rest of your life. When you work at a company, you'll work with other people, and it's very important that you be able to work respectfully and honestly with other people. And also, I think you learn best, um, you learn something best when you actually have to teach it. Uh, so if you're working with some friends, maybe you know what you're doing and they don't. Um, instead of just coming here and watching the YouTube video, uh, why don't you try to, try to teach your other friends what's going on, or sorry, rather than telling them, hey, just go watch the video, why don't you try to help them and teach them. Um, actually how to solve the problem. Maybe you're a better teacher than me. Um, that's very possible. So and it will help you learn it as well and help you learn how to uh, work with others respectfully, try to serve them in that way of teaching them. So I encourage you to do that. So this, this videos, uh, this, uh, this YouTube video should not replace you working with friends and working with others. Okay, uh, after that, let's, let's look at this problem. Here you have your tower. There's your tower right there that has like a cell phone signal. We'll say this is a Coric tower, okay. So Coric transmission uh, tower here and is being held up by these two wires here, okay, these two cables. And what it says the tension in cable AB, that's this cable here, is eight kilonewtons. Okay, so we know the magnitude of the of the vector. It's a force vector, and we also know the direction because we know the position that it's attached to the tower. We know that what this 20 plus 30, so 50 meters up the tower, and 40 meters to the left of it. So we know the starting and end position of the cable. So we know the direction of the of the tension in the cable. So we know everything about this tension vector. TAB, and I'm going to go ahead and draw that. There you go. This would be TAB, and it's 8 kilonewtons. Okay? So now, I, I drew the force vector pulling away from A. Now, now why, why that and not putting the arrow here? Well, because simply you can't push on a rope, or you can't push on a cable. Cables are always used in tension. They're not used in compression. So let's, yeah. here's a little, a little example here. Here's a little headphone wire attached to a pin. So here's the transmission cable. I'm sorry, here's the transmission tower, the pin there. And here's the cable, okay? So if I try to actually push on the transmission tower, like you, you can't do it, you cannot, transfer a pushing force through a cable or through a rope, okay? But if I try to actually pull on it, well, then you can do that, okay? So, a, just simply put, you can't push on a rope. So, the force that this cable is exerting on the tower is a tension force. It's pulling on it, okay? So, let's draw that vector in the correct direction. Okay. And what else here? So, 
Uh, however, we do not know the tension in cable AC, this TAC. We don't know that. Okay. Now, it says to determine the required tension in that cable AC such that the net effect, which means the uh, the which means the sum of these two uh, of of the two tension vectors, is a downward force point at A. Or sorry, is a downward force at A. So when I add this tension vector and this tension vector, add those two force vectors, the resultant needs to be straight down. So I actually know something about the resultant vector R here. It needs to be straight down. So it can't be pulling off to the side either way like this. It can't, it can't be like that. You do not want these two vectors to be pulling the tower to the left or to the right, but rather pulling it straight down. So what do I know about the resultant vector? I don't know the magnitude of it, but I do know the direction of the resultant vector. So I'm going to add tension vector AB plus tension vector AC, and that's going to equal this resultant vector. Now the resultant vector, if I look at its components here, Sorry, now I've already said an X component and a Y component, but a very important thing here is that a vector does not make any sense unless you have a coordinate system, unless you have some frame of reference on which to base the direction of the vector from. Now in this problem, a coordinate system is not defined for us, so you must be the one to define the coordinate system. So I'll just define a coordinate system appropriate for this problem. And the simple one that we normally use is where positive x is pointing to the right. Sorry about that. Positive x is pointing to the right and positive y is pointing up. So I've defined my coordinate system here. Okay? If a coordinate system is not defined for you in the problem, you must choose one. You cannot, or else this vector does not make sense. Okay? I have to know which direction is the i, i direction. Remember, i hat is positive x, and j hat, that's a unit vector in the positive y. Okay, so now I've defined a frame of reference for which to base these vectors on. Now, since I know the resultant vector is pointing down, that means that what's the y component of this vector? Well, the y component, oh, I'm sorry, not the y component. What's the, what's the x component? <laughs> sorry, what's the, what's the x component? of this resultant vector. The x component is zero. None of this resultant vector here is pointing to the left or pointing to the right. This vector is all in the y direction, all in the j, j hat component. Okay. So since I know something about the direction of the resultant vector, then I can solve for my one unknown TAC. Okay. So let's actually write each vector and component form here. Okay, I'll write T, A, B. Let's write it in component form. Now, notice I've already gone through, I've drawn a picture of what I want here. Um, I've written out, if you say, a governing equation before I start trying to do any calculations. Uh, so if this is T, A, B, here's T, A, C. That's actually, there you go. So here's the resultant vector right there. Okay, I use parallelogram ball there. Okay, so TAB. Uh, I need an angle here. I need an angle. Let's define this angle here. I'll call that theta. So I can find theta by doing the tangent inverse of this distance over this distance here. So there's a right triangle. Okay, this distance is 40 meters divided by 20 plus 30 divided by the 50 meters there. Okay, so then I can get theta from that. Theta comes out to be 38.7 degrees. Okay, now now that I have the direction defined, I can write tension vector AB in component form. So the magnitude is 8 kilonewtons. For the x component here, I'll use uh, 
X component is right there, and there's TAX, and there's TAY. So eight times, now, the X component here, sorry, so here's a right triangle. X component is opposite angle theta, opposite to that, so I'll use sine. So eight times the sine of theta, and that is in the negative X direction because I define positive X is to the right, and the X component of this vector is to the left. So that's a negative I hat. All right, and for the Y component, it's also is pointing down, pointing down here. The, the y component of TAB, and that's going to be a times the cosine of theta j hat, and the units of that are kilonewtons. Now I'm going to leave this as theta, just it's just easier. I have theta already defined over here. So now let's define tension vector TAC. Okay. Well, TAC, I need to define another angle here. In this case, I'll define, I'll define this angle right here. Let's call that angle beta. So I can find angle beta. By doing arctan, and because let's say here's a right, oops, sorry. Yeah. So I have a right triangle that goes from A to C and then up vertically and then over. So here's a right triangle, here's the right angle. This length is 30 and this length here is 50. So to find this angle beta, opposite over adjacent, tan inverse of 30 over 50. And that gives us an angle of 30.96 degrees. Okay, so now I've defined angle beta. So now let's define, let's divide the tension vector AB, sorry, tension vector AC into component form. I don't know the magnitude of it, that's okay. TAC, this time times the cosine of beta for the I hat direction, and minus TAC. Again, TAC is the magnitude of the vector, it's the whatever the force is in the cable, whatever the tension force is. Now the y component is times the sine of beta j hat. Now the minus because this tension vector is pulling down in the negative y direction here. Okay, and we'll have this as a kilonewtons. Okay, now what do I know about r? Well, I know r is zero i hat plus some r y. We don't know that what that is j hat. Okay. But I don't need to know this. I don't even need the y component here. Because if I look at my equation, this vector equation, remember when you add vectors, you have to add similar components. So let's take the i hat component of this vector equation. So what's the i hat component of TAB? Well, that's minus 8 times the sine of theta. What's the i hat component of TAC? Well, that's this. That's TAC times the cosine of beta. And what does that equal? It equals the i hat component, the x component, of the resultant vector, which we know to be zero because the resultant vector is straight down. So here's an equation. I know theta. I know beta. The only unknown in this equation is TAC. So one equation, one unknown. I can solve for that. TAC comes out to be 5.83. So when I solve this equation, I get a number of 5.83. But don't forget to put units on each answer. Okay, this is not newtons, remember. Oops, sorry about that. We're working in kilonewtons here. So 5.83 kilonewtons. That's the tension required in this cable AC in order for the resultant force to be straight down, which means that the sum of these two forces is pulling this tower straight into the ground, not to the left or to the right. All right. Hope you have a good day, guys. Coffees.